and I officially got allowed to run my own shop with my peers. By the end of the year, we made £15,000, and we were all 15. Um, we were literally selling £100 worth of snack. It was a table, it was a very slick operation. Um, and at the same time, we were studying business, and we were able to apply cash flow, organizational structure. We were able to apply these fundamental skills that we're learning for the first time. Um, and that was the real, the real, the real first time I was able to actually learn about so really, things. maybe the skills you're talking about, you know, it's not about entrepreneurship, it's about some of the, the business yeah. basics. Business basic, but cash flow. But well, most importantly, it's about curiosity. Yeah. So by the time I was 16, I, I, was, I was consulting for brands and I worked with Nike, I actually did Google Hackathon at one point. Um, and the interesting, the interesting spectrum was when I was 16, I was going back to these schools and I was telling 14 year olds, I'm 16 and I'm working with these brands. Why are you not curious? And yeah. I, I'm, I must have. Well, I think what Neil's saying is similar to you. It's like, you know, when you're four or five, you've already mm -hmm. got that innately in you. And then you have to you wait until you do what you're doing. And I mean, I know about 10 years ago, my dad's a governor of a school called Rill um, in, 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 I think that's in, in Camden. And they, they did a, uh, a competition for eight and nine year old kids to do a business plan. Mm -hmm and make something so, and so you know kids loved it I and mean, you're not too young yeah. to do it as an eight-year-old never mind as a as a 14 year old so this is exactly the point and the point that you're making the curriculum has basically gotten in the way of learning because you know like you learned about cash flow by doing cash flow i mean that's how you, rather than sitting in a classroom and learning about cash flow you can basically, you know, if there's knowledge and there's skills, there's no reason why we can't gain both the knowledge and the skills by doing everything, by doing projects of all kinds. Uh, it doesn't always have to be business. It's all, all kinds of projects. And that, I think our goal uh, should be to gradually replace the curriculum, which is this kind of trying to just transmit knowledge uh, uh, and okay. replace it with a process where it's almost everything is by projects and doing. And as the gentleman so, down here was saying, sorry. Saul, the, yeah. the point is, and you're saying here, Saul, it's, it is about applied learning and having it within the curriculum. We have a school shop that every class within the school gets to run and operate. And so four-year-olds last week made 160 pounds uh, within that school. Now they had to get a loan from the school to do that. They have to negotiate with that, that with the school business manager in order to do that. They have to make their own products, they, they have to market it, see how successful that is on Monday and then readapt their products and maybe their marketing for Tuesday because they didn't manage to sell anything. Those kind of skills are ones which should be right at the heart of whatever the curriculum well, might I be. Mean, you know, the, the irony of the 10% number, I mean we can sort of pat ourselves on the back and say 10% of the UK economy is the internet. All that means is we shop a lot on the internet. It means we've turned from a nation of digital, or, or we've turned from a nation of shopkeepers who, you know, people know how to buy, sell, trade, do business into a nation of digital shoppers. So there, I know there are a lot of, a lot of people who want to ask questions. My mom wants to ask one first, so, <laughs> yeah? Okay. So I'm a speech and language therapist specializing in dyslexia and the research today shows quite conclusively that you have to teach little ones formally to read and to be numerate and you can build your creativity on that. But don't throw out literacy and numeracy as a basic skill. I don't, I don't think that's what I'm suggesting at all. The, the whole point is that it's about applied learning. So we don't want to get rid of a curriculum, nor do we want to get away from core skills. And what I was saying earlier was, yes, of course you need core skills. Uh, this isn't a move towards some woolly, airy-fairy kind of curriculum. It can't be that. It actually has to be very rigorous and applied. We've got maths later. Um, on, on in the day, and we got, you know, there's a brilliant uh, company called Storybird that is, is, is around creativity and, and storytelling. So I think, I don't want to cut off the conversation, but I do want to be slightly Swiss about this, and we're coming up to, you know, uh, the, the, next, the next lesson. So for those of you who have questions, we're going to have a chance in, in all, all classes 
to ask questions. And if this is an entrepreneurial school, you'll ask questions from the first class to people in the second class. And we're also going to, you know, when my daughter looked at the schedule this morning, it's like, why have you got all these breaks? So there's time for people to also talk to one another as well. But so we can stick, stick to time. Can we just say thanks to the first panel?